Hello everyone, my name is Jeff and I'm a content producer with NACEF and today I'm going to be talking with Mark Godinas who is the AP Computer Science Principals Teacher at South Dade Senior High School among his many other roles. And today we're going to talk to him about his esports club, namely how he got involved, what he's teaching, and his students' experiences. So to start off, can you tell me a bit about your role at South Dade Senior High School? Um, yes, good afternoon, Jeff. Um, my role at the school is I'm the AP Computer Science Principals Teacher. I'm also the Academy of IT um, teacher, and I'm also um, a vocational teacher at the school. Awesome. And then how did you get involved with video games and esports? Um, Miami-Dade County Public Schools, um, I had the fortunate luck to get involved um, because last year, or this school, actually this school year, um, they started with 10 schools. Um, we got an email to see if we wanted to participate, and um, I jumped on it, and it's been an incredible journey. That's awesome. So kind of like the big question here is like, what does Scholastic Esports mean to you? I remember in the beginning, so I want to make sure I make this very clear if there's any teachers out there. Um, I was a little scared because I, I remember um, hearing about League of Legends and the terminology and I, I'm like, oh my God, what am I getting myself into? Um, so in the beginning, Scholastic Esports, honestly, I had I, I didn't really have an idea what it was. I just, you know, I, I had the misconception, okay, it's games. Mm -hmm. So I, I knew my students love games, gaming, and, um, you know, I, te I teach technology and I know that the students love it. So that was my idea of what it was when I first started. Now, after being through the process, it's, um, it's, it's been an incredible journey and I have so much information to give to teachers, parents, and students and the community about what Scholastic Esports really is. Okay, so it sounds like you didn't really come from like a video game background when you started this out. You learned a lot of it as you w started it. Yes, yes. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah. that, that's a, it's a big challenge to take on and uh, it's pretty awesome. Uh, what was like, so would you say like the terminology was the most daunting part of this challenge for you personally? Um, yeah, because I think honestly it was, I did not want to, you know, I wanted to, do a good job for the kids. And, um, you know, I, I we, we played on um, Smash Brothers and I, you know, I have I have younger, um, my own children, I have two young boys. So, you know, I play with them, but, you know, I just didn't want to do a bad job. So, you know, coming into the process, it was a little bit overwhelming, but the resources with um, NASF was incredible. Like I, I never felt like I was ever lost. Like I've had other teachers and, and NAFES, um, NAF, NASF, all the resources that they gave me has been um, actually like, you know, perfect to be honest with you, because I just felt like I never really had a problem. I mean, that's uh, great to hear. <laughs> uh, awesome, awesome. So what do you do with esports at your school? Like what club activities, do you do VOD reviews, learning sessions? Um, I have an incredible way that I do it. You know, I, the way I do it, I it's part of, the curriculum that I teach because um, I have a unity class so my students are learning unity so they're learning how to build games and they're learning about C sharp and you know this was just an incredible um, curriculum and, and process to infuse into my classes but I also have an after-school program and I think that's what's been the most incredible because I have my technology students but I have the after school where it's my technology students and the students from 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 the school. So um, that's one thing I want to mention before I forget is that initially, um, I, I'll be honest, like last year I had a coding club. Um, I had four students and, mm -hmm. you know, we, four incredible students. We did a lot of great things. Um, and then from four to almost like 100 students. And but, you know, like, you know, I guess I'll, I'll answer it later in one of the questions, but everything is so so smooth like the kids have their roles and it's just something so so beautiful you have a big room you have a lot of students but it's not it's not chaotic every everyone is doing something so that's what i love about it awesome now uh, you mentioned you only had four students right there compared to the hundred you have now and that's after the addition of uh, video games and esports curriculum why do you think esports curriculum is resonating so heavily with your students because it's still coding well, I think the process is that I think they see the after being involved because, you know, what I love about the um, Scholastic Esports is that, you know, we had um, competitions with other, other schools. Um, we had actually speakers that they, you know, I learned and they learned real information. 
So it's like, you know, I think they just saw past buying the game and being a consumer and just like join the game. And they now they, they know what a prototype is. They know about the development process, about the software process, about marketing is huge. Mm -hmm. um, I, communication is huge. Um, you know, I, I think the soft skills um, has grown tremendously with my students because before this experience, they had a hard time um, pair programming, you know, and after this experience, they got they got to experience how to work with other students from the class, from the school and from other schools and people in the community. Awesome. So would you say like the soft skills are the kind of the biggest things right now that your students are taking away from this program? Um, I think so, because I think on like, you know, they see the development process and, you know, the hard um, the technical skills they, they learn. I think they got a, a, a deeper knowledge of just, OK, let me because I think before before the experience, they would just want to build a game without even thinking about the process. And I think after this, you know, there was more questions that I saw that they were asking themselves. Okay, um, let let me think about it. Let me go to, to development, you know, to the to the process of thinking the um, the project through first before I even start programming. That that's awesome. Uh, it's great skills to learn is to be able to plan out things and visualize it before you even start. It makes makes a lot easier down the road. Yes. Uh, what about you? Like, what are some of the things you've learned through this experience? Because it sounds like you've learned a lot yourself. Um, I've always been one big on service learning with my students and what I really gained from this as a teacher and you know I'm, I'm, a, I'm a big community member I give a lot to my community um, is that this gives me gives me as a teacher an educator and a parent an opportunity to um, get more kids involved and I'm all about equity and this has been very and a very a, a very incredible process for equity because i'm getting kids i'm getting females number one i'm getting minorities from different groups and that's a big thing for me because it's not just you have a cookie cutter type student coming into the club it's like you look at the club it's it's basically a snapshot of of our school you know it, you have everyone involved so i think that's the biggest thing for me is having something i can use to get the kids excited about doing community service and helping other peers. Awesome. I'm going to come back to community service a little later on, but you mentioned that you're getting a lot more involvement from students that you haven't normally seen. What is it about video games that you see that attracts them? Because it's difficult to get all that uh, diversity in everything, and then you're also getting all that equity. What about the um, process what about, that like, makes the like video games itself, because like that seems that's the overall theme here is that, that it's bringing in everybody. Oh yeah, I can answer that. Like for example, I'll give you an example. Like perfect example would be like um, I have the gamers, mm -hmm. so I have the the kids that just love to play, but within the whole ecosystem, I have the 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 the, the managers, the the ones in charge of tournaments and in charge of the club, the, the you know like little managers that I have in the classroom. And those um, have been my female students. And one big thing that has come out of this is the fan art. Mm -hmm. um, getting kids, you know, um, artists and getting them involved, it's been incredible. Because then on, on you have in my lab, you have the computer lab, and then you have artists there. And then, you know, I had somebody paint something. And it's just so many things that are involved in this. And that's, you know, back to your question is like, that's how you're able to infuse and get more people involved from different you know areas um from different areas not just about you know playing games it's like okay look you know i love art and let me get let me be part of this process awesome so you're really bringing in students into all aspects of not only video games but like esports like the production side the background side the front facing side and then yes even the people that play the games yes yes it's been it's been awesome that's awesome. And then uh, I want to move on to the community service part because this is a big part of what you've done with your program. Can you expand on why it's important that you have that community service aspect to be part of your program? Um, for me, it's very important. Um, you know, I, I'm so just in case, no, you know, I'm from South Dade Senior High School. We're located in Homestead, Florida. We're an ag community. So we're, you know, people think Miami, we're like an hour away from Miami. And you know, when you think of Homestead, you really don't think about, about technology. Um, this is important for me because it gives an opportunity to bring in um, kids from the community 
And I love that my high school, because even, you know, during the hurricane, even right now during COVID-19, my high school is the one that is giving out food. Um, we're a shelter, you know, when, when it comes down to that. We're the community high school of, of our community. And I love getting younger kids involved and they see what that, you know, gaming is computer science, but it's not about just playing the games. And, you know, my high school kids talk to them and say, hey, you know, I build these games in Unity. And then we bring out the VR units. Mm -hmm. And they're like, oh, that's that's part of it. And yeah, you see, you, you you get the conversations going. I wish I can tell you they get, they get excited when they talk to me, you know, not all the time. But when they hear it from other kids that mm -hmm. are older, that's where that's where the, the, the communication and the, and the importance of this whole thing is, is getting the kids in, um, you know, as young as kindergarten involved. And that's, wow. that's incredible. Awesome. So like part of that community service, like a, a huge benefit for you is getting more students interested at a younger age to think about these things and maybe enter these fields themselves. Yes, because I know when I talk to parents in the community, um, for example, you know, when they come we're a magnet school, so that the kids have a chance to choose um, what magnet they want to go into. And I think there's a lot of misinformation with parents. They're like, I don't want my child in, in technology. They're just going to play games. Mm -hmm. Because, for example, I'm, I'm, my, my strand is the gaming design and foundation. So you, you see the word you see the word gaming. They're like, oh, they're just going to play <laughs> games. You know, so this is able to give um, education. It's an, like I love I love because it's I always say it, it's scholastic esports. So we're, we're concentrating on the educational part of it. And it enables me, and even my students have become teachers themselves because it enables them to, to educate other, other students and, and peers and, and parents about what Scholastic Esports is about, which is, you know, like you said, it, it's, you know, the software, the, the people behind the scenes, marketing, you know, the business yeah. aspect. It's, it's just, you know, I, we can go, we can talk all day. Oh, yeah. Just, yeah, yeah, we can go on and on. But, you know, it's 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 very educational what they get out of this. Awesome. And then you did run that local uh, a Smash tournament at your local library, and you had your students run it, if I'm not mistaken. How was that experience for them? Um, I remember that day because, you know, I, I always get anxiety before any event, and that was the first one. And, you know, we partnered up with Homestead Library, so it was incredible. They gave us a room. Um, they gave us a projector. So the kids ran it. I mean, basically, I, I was just there um, and I learned a lot from them. You know, like I was just there to monitor and to talk to parents and, you know, just to make sure everything was OK. But they ran everything from the brackets to the to the, the social aspect. Um, you know, one of our winners was um, a young kid. And, you know, like I, I learned from it, too, because I remember when he came in, I was like, oh, no, he's going to, you know, He's gonna play with the bigger kids. We gotta, we gotta look at the age. And uh, he he ended up winning. You know, it's funny. Um, but you know, they learned a lot. And you know, it, it's it, it's 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 real world. You know, projects. It's mm -hmm. not something I can give them. You know, like an assignment. You know, type this up or even code this. It's it's not the same. Like what they learned, and they were even streaming. You know, they were. You know, the, you got the media, the social media involved. Um, it's just so much that they learned out of this, and this was just one um, project that they did for the community. But for the community, it was huge. That was the first ever tournament ever for for the community, and we're gonna hold another one, you know, next year once everything is settled back in. But it was it was a huge thing for for the students, for the school, and for the community. That that's awesome. I know I, I would have loved to see some of those things when I was in high school. And then uh, you've talked about this a little bit uh, already, but there's always that skepticism when you know parents are looking at gaming as part of a curriculum. What what else can you tell me about scholastic esports and how you teach this that would help dispel some of that skepticism for parents who see gaming and just kind of run away? Um, that's a great question. The good news is in our district we have a lot of competitions to showcase what the kids do. Um, for example, I know, you know, my colleague, I'm going to give him a lot of credit, like, you know, his school did an incredible job. Um, they got the theme of um, climate change and they made unity games. So, you know what, I'm starting to infuse that with um, the games that I, that I have my kids build mm -hmm. are towards uh, an issue that, you know, is, is involved in environment or, or the society. 
and I tell I tell parents, look, we're not just focusing on 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 games that's out in the market. Like I, I really have the kids really think what computer science is and how it affects the whole world. And especially now what happened, you know, technology is part of everyone's world now, no matter yeah. where you are. It, it you know, you, it didn't matter. Now everyone has to deal with technology one way or another. So I think that's why, you know, I know what you're saying. It's like a lot of people, would, I think, you know, that word gaming, it's, it, you know, a lot of people unfortunately see a lot of negative. Mm -hmm. But, you know, with the, with um, Scholastic Esports, you learn the rules, you learn how to, to, um, how to lose, you know, like it's just computer <laughs> science. Failure, failure is not failure. Failure is good. That means something, something happened and you learn from it. You know, like we played our first league. We didn't do so well, but we learned from it. And I love the way that they, you know, they congratulated the other schools and the other teammates. And there was no, you know, people being, you know, negative or anything. They, they were being very positive about it. It was a learning experience. And that's what I tell the parents, you know, um, don't think of it like you're, they're just gonna go home and play a game. No, they're gonna learn a lot from it. And you know, they even can have like a, a business project that I might have next year mm -hmm. where they can, I, you know, I think that's a great idea. You gave me an idea where they can even talk to their parents and, and you know, that they can have that conversation. Awesome, I mean, so that kind of goes straight into my next question is, how would you advise parents kind of approach their kids when trying to learn about esports if they don't know anything about it? Because that can be one of the most difficult things is connecting with your kid on something that they're so passionate about, but you know absolutely nothing about. No, that, yeah, I tell them all the time because even with my, you know, I can use, um, I'm a parent, you know, and my, my kids, you know, I remember when I first, you know, my, my, my son turned 10, you know, I got him Smash and, you know, he would play with my other, my other kid and, I wasn't really involved, um, but I've learned the process. You know, like you, you, you kind of like see what what the children like, mm -hmm. and you can learn from it. And there are rules. I mean, when you think about it, like there's a lot going on in a game. There's a lot. It's not like when yeah. I was younger. I mean, I'm not gonna divulge my age. It was Tetris, and you know, I love Tetris, or you know, and you can figure it out, but. There's a lot going on in a game, and there's a lot of strategy. You know, like you're 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 developing plans in your head of what you need to do. It's almost it's it's like playing chess, and yeah. you know, I, I tell the parents that like in, they're learning a process, and if I think that's you know I tell them look talk to talk to your kid, ask them what they're doing, ask them you know what the role is, and I always tell them what is their role because there's different roles in different games, and and some of my parents have have been you know have been, you know, glad they did. You know, it's, it's starting a conversation with your, I mean, what I tell my parents, start that conversation with your kid. And from that conversation, then you can develop, um, you know, a rapport, and then you can get into other things that you want to get into. But I, it starts a conversation with your ch children. That's, that's awesome, yeah, definitely. There's always so much to think about when you're playing a game. I know when I play League, no matter what position I'm in, I'm thinking, okay, what are their cooldowns? Can I beat them in a fight? Can they kill me right away? Like, everything's just going on at the same time, and it's just, it is like chess, like you said. Um, so what advice would you give the students in those situations, though? If they don't know anything about it? If the students are trying to convince their parents to, like, kind of engage with them or let them join a program like yours. Okay. Awesome. I, I would tell the children to focus on what we do, like the community service um, or, you know, within my classes, um, I tell them to tell the parents how they're building a game. Because I know when they if I just show the, the end product of what the, the children did, you know, it looks cool in their eyes. But if they don't they don't see the code behind it, mm -hmm. they don't see the development process behind it. So I, you know, I like to showcase uh, have them snapshot the code that they wrote and to explain their parents like development process of that code because it's it's math mm -hmm. it's 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 very you know it's not just easy math it's you it's a process and and the parents have been amazed you know i think they're more amazed with that aspect than with the final product of the, of the final game um they're seeing that the children are are using their 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 heads in a mathematical sense and and they love that you know and then they get into it you know once they learn more about the game then we can get them more into um what's going on but i think they love that math is involved and syntax is involved you you know it's language 
you know, it's a, it's a computer language mm -hmm. and it, there is a syntax involved, whatever language you're learning. And I think that's where the parents learn a lot of what we're doing too. Awesome. And then what are your kind of final thoughts on like esports being part of high school and middle school curriculums and their overall place in the educational system kind of moving forward? Because this is a new thing that we're seeing pop up around the, uh, around the country. Um, no, I think this is here to stay, and I think, you know, the way that NASF has set it up, it's, it's, it's just what we needed, because I think, you know, if I would have started this, let's say, five years ago without any guidance, I would have just had a club, let's play a game, mm -hmm. and it would have been kind of chaotic, and there would, really would have been there, you know, like, if my principal would have come to me, and I, I, I would have no answer, like, <laughs> would have asked me, where's the educational part of this, and I would have said they're having fun, <laughs> um, you know, so no, but you know, like this is here to stay. This is part of, of society, you know, and you know, even with games, you know, people don't think about that. We're talking about apps, you know, there's thing people use apps every day mm -hmm. and, and you know, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's here to stay. And the kids, what they're learning is a skill they need to be successful in today's um, world. Really, they, they need these skills, no matter what your career is. And I tell that all the time. Computer science is involves all <laughs> all fields of study. No matter what you're studying, there's there's some gaming or technology involved. Awesome. It sounds like you're really setting them up for a lot of success future in their future. And then um. No, it's because of you guys. Thank you. <laughs> you know, it's like I'm, I'm just you know I've learned a lot. Trust me. <laughs> It's awesome to hear. Uh, and then, so lastly, what's been the most rewarding part of this experience for you? Um, for me, the, as, you know, as as a as educator in my heart is is them going and doing community service because we actually partnered up with um, Redland Elementary, and the kids go to the school. They were going. I I, told, I gave them the option of going two times, and before everything happened, it was like three months into it, they were going every week. And they were teaching um, younger kids like from K to fifth grade, mm -hmm. how to make games in scratch, how to use drones, how to, um, what VR is and all this stuff. And it came from, it came from the club, you know? And and that's how they got, they, that's how they got the kids attention. They're like, we're, even though know, we're Scholastic Esports and the kids eyes opened up. And from there they started a relationship and they were teaching um, younger kids about computer science and that that's that's what I really love about this is is what the students get out of it and how they give back to to the community that's that's awesome uh, it's it's really great that they were going every week and it's a testament to what you've done at the school no thank you it's, it's, it's been awesome all right uh, that is all I have for you I want to thank you very much for taking the time to talk with me today it's been very educational for me and hopefully also for our viewers. Uh, for all of you out there, stay tuned. We've got more interviews with Florida teachers coming up soon. Thanks, everyone, and have a good day. All right. Thank you.